Waxers, and welcome to Waxing Lyrical The Return. I'm your host, Mains, and my colleague, who's deciding whether throwing an alligator at, at a Wendy's fast food is a, is a right response for a burger you didn't like, is Mr. Neil Dutton. How are we, Neil? We've all had service that has not quite met expectations. I just wonder that, I, I think I'm too lazy to go through the trouble of having to, you know, buy an alligator, import it, go through the quarantine proceedings just to throw it in McDonald's. I think you, you just accept you've had a bad one and go back and, get, and try it again. I think, I think we're, we're, um, we're talking about a story that we read yesterday in the Washington Post that where a, a Florida man, as all great stories start, um, threw an alligator at a Wendy's. It, it's now been seen that it was a... He did it as a prank as his friend worked there. There's a multitude of stories about how you get a gator in your car. Um, how do you throw a gator without it, you know, biting your head off? What happens when you throw it at the Wendy's? Have you got your video on? Are you doing this via Periscope or Snapchat? These are the things that I don't know. But all we need to know, people, is there's a multitude of garbage that you find on the internet and on Twitter. But if you ever see a line that starts, a Florida man slash a Florida woman, make sure you click on that link because it's going to be comedy gold. Yeah. Seriously, if, if you know... Evil Bond style villains want to subvert the will of the people. Start your story, clickbait with you won't believe what this Florida man did. <laughs> and even though everyone looks at things like that, you know, says, you know, what happened next will blow your mind. No, no, no. If you start with this Florida man, everyone will click. And it could be anything there. We will read it. I and will. we will believe it. And we will believe it. So don't we big show this week. We're gonna wrap up NFL with the Super Bowl that happened on Sunday. And then we're going to talk about one of the most talked about shows over the past couple of months and one that's got me and you in quite a tizzy, and that's Making a Merza. And it's not got us in such a tizzy, it's also got my fiance Kate in such a tizzy. It's got her in such, such a flap that she actually wants to talk about it. So we have a guest on the show, Dutton, my fiance Kate, to rant about Making a Merza. Sounds apt. Sounds apt. So we are making making majors and Super Bowl champs this week, people. Firstly, let's get on to the Super Bowl, Dutton. I think we should. Dutton, game over. Denver Broncos win. We all ride off into the sunset and start focusing on next year. Over the past few seasons, we've, we've had what we think are good Super Bowls. And this one hasn't lived up to that hype. 24-10 in the end, Broncos win. Was that due to poor, poor play or excellent defence? I think the game turned out the exact way the Denver Broncos needed it to for them to win. And the, their offence could only do so much because we've seen what it can do in the playoffs. It could only get them so far they then have to turn the keys over to the defence and Coach Phillips. Because, I mean, first first down, two yards. Second down, two yards. Third down, incomplete punt. It happened too many times for it not to be a strategy. It was a case of, look, we can't make a big enough play to score, but we can damn well make sure they don't score. So let's get our playmakers on the field. And in this case, the playmakers were Von Miller, Malik Jackson, DeMarcus Ware... Uh, Derek Wolf, they weren't Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, CJ Anderson to a lesser extent. So I think it was an actual, a well executed game plan, uh, but and it was executed by some very very talented players. So in in that sense, don't you know, there's a lot of three and outs, especially on the Denver side. Uh, but you're saying that 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 almost when you get when you get ten nil up at in the beginning of the game, that's almost that's the plan now. Stick it up your jumper. We don't think they can score enough points to win this game. We may get a, you know another couple of points, maybe another defensive score. So let's just do what we need to do and not kill ourselves. Mm. Denver's offense basically for most of the game was bringing a knife to a gunfight, but that's okay because Carolina was bringing a wet fish because it was we've got ten points. You know, as you know, teams generally don't come back from ten points down and win the Super Bowl. But if you do, you generally have to start throwing and passing more. Well, I'm so, that plays into Coach Phillips' hands as well. So ultimately, it was Peyton, get us to half time, still in this game. We'll take it from here. And that's what happened. So, Dutton, you mentioned Wade Phillips. Um, 
a, a, a friend of ours, I guess we've spoken to him on, on a podcast before. Let's wax, let's just wax lyrical about the job that he's done with this Denver defense over the past twelve months. Wade Phillips was out of football in 2014, and the Eagles had Billy Davis as defensive coordinator. We had we had a guy who, who took the took the, the Detroit Lions to 0 and 16 as a defensive coordinator. And apparently, uh, uh, Coach Phillips did want to coach on the Washington staff because his son's the there is a coach. There is a Phillips on board, yeah. And we and we actually we actually pressed him on that, and he said he would because he basically worked for every. I he basically worked for every other uh, team in the NFC East. If you want to go back to that podcast, go through the archives of the MDDF, and you'll find it. Wade Phillips was a really engaging character, really nice guy, and. Obviously, wanted to, you could tell he wanted to get back into football. He was given his chance by Gary Kubiak, who was his defense, who was the defensive coordinator in Denver when Gary Kubiak was there as the um, backup QB, and he's done him proud. I, I, I think the thing we need to understand is that that what 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 actually happened is, and we know John Elway is inextricably linked with these Denver Broncos, but John has been able to get players on board in that team, the TJ Wards, the Demarcus Wears, the Akeem Talibs to win the Super Bowl, which is not easy when your quarterback who's supposed to be winning the Super Bowl who now can't throw it is at getting nineteen million a year. Yeah, um I'm winning there's different ways to win. And you know, we don't I'm sure we I'm sure Denver would have loved to have won it in two thousand thirteen with the record breaking offence that they compiled with Peyton Manning playing, you know, with Star Wars numbers. But it wasn't to be. They played the team that was tougher than them, that kept hitting them in the mouth and they couldn't get up. So they took that and said, No, no, what we need to do is we need to be tougher. John Fox went some of that way, but couldn't quite get there with his staff. Kubiak came in and basically he did what all good offensive coaches should do leave the defence people who know what they're talking about and let them run it and and that's where you look at like and Gary Kubiak you know as once Sue Bowles as an offensive coordinator he, he had a decent offence in Houston but you know it's like Brian Billick when he was the coach of the Baltimore Ravens before he went to Baltimore he was an offensive genius with the Minnesota Vikings at Baltimore they did jack on offence but he had talent all over the field on defence and he'd let his defensive coordinator do his job. Yep. That's what you've got to do. It's Micromanagement can be the death of even something beautiful. Let your people do your job. It's We've had this discussion in the past. If you were a head coach, assume you're an offensive man and head coach, would you call your own plays? Your answer was, I don't think I should have to. No. That's not the job. The, the, your job is to man. Your job is to manage the game as the head coach, and you should have someone as your offensive coordinator who thinks like you or call plays like you. That's the point of the. That's the point of the situation. That's why sometimes you look and you think they've just called this offensive coordinator in from nowhere with no link to the, your team whatsoever. This is not going to work. Mm. And it's about surrounding yourself with. You know, you've got to have trust. The head coach and a coordinator. We've seen like one of the greatest defenses of all time, the '85 Chicago Bears. Do you think Mike Ditka and, uh, and Buddy Ryan are, go- are good mates now? No. Do you think they were good mates when you were on the coaching staff? Just watch any kind of documentary about them whatsoever. They hated each other, and the, and the two sides of the ball hated each other as well. But I mean, I've read three different books. I've read Collision Low, Low Crosses, which is about the 2011 New York Jets, um, bringing the heat about the 93 Philadelphia Eagles and next man up about the 2006 Baltimore Ravens was it 2006? sorry 2004 Baltimore Ravens these three teams all had one thing in common great great defences piss poor offences and that splits teams so if you can have say you basically can say to the likes of Peyton Manning Demarius Thomas who you know he had a good season but not not, not his great one you can say to them if we're going to win the Super Bowl it's not about you and you can get them on board. You've done a great job. So I suppose we need to move on to, to the the man who, when we look back in a decade, this Super Bowl will all be about, whether we like it or not, and that's Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, for, for eternity, has been known as someone who chokes in the playoffs, not won the big games. Is the, can Will their legacy be changed slightly when you look at it now? He's now he's now got a winning record in the playoffs. 
He's got he's two and two in Super Bowls. He's three and one against he's three and two against Brady. Three and one against Brady in AFC title games. He's got two hundred co- career wins. People still thought of him as one of the top five quarterbacks of all time. But do those numbers now shift it where he might be a top three? Probably because um, recency bias and the rings go a long way. I mean, a lot of people will still make the claim that if Eli Manning retired tomorrow, he'd be a Hall of Famer because he's got two Super Bowl rings. Eli Manning, you know, of course, probably might look very happy to go into the Hall of Fame, as happy as he looked uh, the winning touchdown. But ultimately, it, numbers go so far. Only people who watch it now, and we're too close. I've always said, you know, recently, past, we're too close to assess this. In 10, 15, 20 years, when we're all old and grey, and people will ask us, what was Peyton Manning like? Our memories may be slightly clouded. Yes, we'll remember the great numbers and all the touchdowns and the wins. And he won two Super Bowls. We won't remember that he was essentially a caretaker in one of them and he beat a Rex Grossman-led team in the other. Here's some stats for you, Dalton. Um, 12 of 22 for 123 yards, no touchdowns and one interception. That was John Elway in 1997 when he won his first Super Bowl. You've seen America's game, Neil. And I know he wins MVP in the second one, but in the first one, it's John's Super Bowl and he leads them to the Super Bowl victory. I'm looking at the stat there and he didn't. As you said, it's based purely on how we think about it in that point. In the Back in the day, and it's easy to say now, people will tell you now that John Elway was better than Dan Marino. Dan Marino was infinitely more talented than John Elway, but Dan Marino won Jack, mm. and John Elway won two Super Bowls and went to another three. Because I say that last game again, and this this is where it comes down the whole Denver Broncos organization. It's about subjugation of ego. John Elway had to basically be, t- be told, "You've carried this team for fifteen years. It's not your team now. We're going to put it on Terrell Davis." Don't lose us this game. We'll take it from there. He was a bit better the second year, the, the second two ball. He did. He was, he was MVP then. He was MVP. He did. <clears throat> but that's because he still had he still had the skills t- to do that. Manning hasn't anymore. I don't think Manning could stand up to another year's punishment and you know go out you know, with three Super Bowl rings. I don't think so. But again, it came down to this. Do not it, and. It, Comes down to this again, this thing that's seen as so negative for quarterbacks, game management. Don't lose the game. It's a, it, there's 53 man roster, 46 people can dress on game day. There's 11 on offense, 11 defense, 11 on special teams. Don't lose the game, whoever you are, and the team will will combine and should win. But if you've got someone who goes out and makes boneheaded mistakes and costs his team, well, the narrative's going to say he choked. So, so, and, and the prime example of that of is a guy who it took six seconds to get into the Hall of Fame on Saturday, and that's Brett Favre. Mm. Brett Favre didn't manage games, tried to win games on his own, and cost the Green Bay Packers victories. He also won them an awful lot of games and won them a Super Bowl and got them to another one. Ironically enough, in this game we're talking, but he only won one Super Bowl. If we move on to the other, only... other side, Dutton, and we get on to the yep. Carolina Panthers, I don't, I, I don't want to spend much time on, on, on the Cam Newton situ, situation, but I've got two questions. Good. On, on his, on, with his on and off field reactions, do you care? No. Do you, so, I don't care about the off field reactions. I do care about the on field ones. And should we be more concerned about him not falling, attempting to fall in that fumble? You invited uh, anyone listening to go back through our archives to listen to something, you know, an interview with Wade Phillips. I invite people also to go back through the archives and listen to what we said about Andy Dalton injuring himself, trying to get an intercept, uh, recover a fumble or an interception. He made consciously or subconsciously, he made a big business decision. I think the only, the only, the only, the only, I absolutely 100% agree. And he said, as far as we were concerned, we would never let our quarterback tackle. I wonder if you think, oh, it's the last game, do you go for it? And whatever, I, it, 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 he didn't. He didn't, and, and that's how it happened. What, what I think from the Carolina Panthers is when we talked about them at the start of the year, when we did our reviews, we said, talented, talented team in certain areas, got no skill talent. 
for, for, for 19 weeks, we were proved wrong. The 20th week, we were proved right. The skill talent was not good enough. And if they would have had Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders instead of Ted Ginn and Jericho Cotchery, they probably would have won the game. I wish I loved anything in life as much as Ted Ginn loves running out of bounds. I, I, don't, I, I can't. I just that's that guy's a first round draft pick and has been in the NFL now for near on a decade as a as a starter and I just don't understand it. The last thing I want to say about the Cam Newton thing is, um, I I'm not particular. This may stagger people. Anyone who's listening who knows me, I wasn't the most talented sportsman in the world. I'm stunned I was by not that. By blessed. the way, as someone who's played with you, I'm stunned by that. I was not blessed with natural talent. I'd like to think. The player I was when I stopped playing the sports I played was infinitely better than the player at the beginning because I worked hard. Ergo, I like people who put in effort. I'm jealous of people who have natural skills like Cam Newton. So therefore, when it comes to my level of sport, I'm all about, you know, play to play. Have a bit of a laugh. Go as far as you can, but ultimately have fun. I'm not being paid $20 million dollars. So I want my quarterback to be pissed off that his team has lost and that partially he's to blame. I want him to be angry. I want him to say, get out of my face. I don't want to talk to you about this because I sucked. I don't want him to come out laughing and say, oh, we'll get here again. Yeah, Dan Marino said he'd get there again. Never did. So if we, if we move straight on to that, where do these two teams stand for next season? Are, are they... Are the Panthers one of the NFC favourites, or do we expect that that what almost becomes natural Super Bowl hangover? Well, I still think they are because they're still in not exactly the strongest division. I think the fact that they have strength and depth, they'll probably cut Charles Johnson. But you saw that Coney Ely was making play after play from I think he only played twenty snaps. So on a on a per snap basis, he's an explosive playmaker. If he can come into into the lineup as a starter and produce, they shouldn't miss uh, Johnson. Jared Allen, I think it's probably time to say goodbye. I still think they're a strong team. They're going to get Kelvin Benjamin back, and they've got a year's experience of being the best team. So they know what it's like to get to be shot at. Well, what do you do? I mean, it's the, oh, well, everyone will know about them. Yeah, but it's not a fancy offense. You know what they're going to do. They've got five. Like, they've got like four running plays and three pass plays, but they execute them well most often than not. I still think they're okay. They've still got a bloody good defense and a, and a very good coaching staff. In terms of Denver, Dutton, in theory, if Peyton Manning retires, which we assume, is this team actually better on offense next season? Because when you got Brock Osweiler, or is that a bit? It's a bit oh, a bit naive to say because in theory they brought Manning back when they had. Osweiler under centre. It's I. It's far too early for me to say, because this team has got you know decisions to make. They need to you know they need to lock up Von Miller. Can they do that and bring back Malik Jackson? I mean, obviously, man, they've said Manning. No pressure at all. You take your time. The the subtext is, but if you can make it before March the ninth, when your contract becomes fully guaranteed, we'd love it. Um, it's it. It's as you say, the post Super Bowl period is always an interesting time for a team, especially when they haven't won one before, or certainly haven't won one recently. Uh, we saw going all the way back to Baltimore after the 2000s, that team broke up probably far too quickly. But you know, they lost the quarterback, um, they lost a few more players. Baltimore again, 2012, decided to go crackers and overpay Joe Flacco. It's it's an interesting off season after it, especially if you haven't locked your players down already. But again, they're in a division that is improving, but you can't call the AFC West a powerhouse. Finally done. NFL season over. So what are your plans for the off season in relation to the NFL? Well, as people may be aware of anyone, any new uh, listeners, uh, welcome at End on 13. Um, I will we'll be writing some draft things um, for Fantasy Pros. Um, I'll be doing, sorry, fantasypros.com. I'll be writing some some contributions, not sure on what topics, for gridironexperts.com. 
Uh, and I shall also be um, joining the team uh, Rotoviz. Um, again, I've got some some of the first articles have gone up. They're about certain players who will benefit from their team's coaching changes. Uh, I think Marco Murray is already up there, if you want to read that. And I have Jameis Winston coming up sometime this week. So I'll be you know, I'll be there. I'll still be still be fighting the good fight. And then obviously from a wax and lyrical point of view, over the next few months we'll talk draft, we'll talk free agency, and then getting closer to the season we'll talk about division reviews. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. We'll have we we'll, as I say, we'll we'll have guests. We've got plenty of guests plenty of old old friends from the old show. Well, happy to come back on and we'll get some new ones as well absolutely absolutely done well that's it for the NFL so I'm going to go and grab Kate now it, not in that sense just in a can you come and sit down please it's a podcast uh, first yeah <laughs> and uh, let's go let's talk about making a murderer so Dutton we want to talk about making a murderer so we thought we'd get a making a murderer expert on uh, we couldn't find one so uh, we got my fiance Kate. Say hello, Kate. Hello, Kate. That was that was funny. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Um, so making a murderer hit show on Netflix. If you don't know what Netflix is, congratulations, you're sixty. Um, well done it's for tw- living. Well done for tw- living this long, and it's twenty. <clears throat> it's twenty sixteen. Get with the get with reality. Sixteen. Put the pager down. Unplug the VHS. And t- turn over the blockbuster card. Turn over the blockbuster card because blockbuster no longer exists. Um, for those who aren't aware, uh, Making a Murderer is is a documentary about a guy called Stephen Avery who was uh, wrongly arrested for rape and uh, sentenced to uh, I think it was eighteen years in jail. Um, uh, I think it was actually twenty five. Yeah, tw- after after eighteen. <clears throat> After 18, evidence was proven that he, he was nowhere near, even though he'd already said that. There was DNA evidence and he was released. Um, I should really say that, spoiler alert now, so we're going to talk about this show. If you don't want to listen, thanks for downloading and we'll see you next week. Mm. Um, he then tries, attempts to sue um, uh, Mantioch Police Department Manitoch. Manitoch Police Department for $36 million. Uh, around about the same time, uh, a woman goes missing, and he's and he's uh, accused of a murder and actually sentenced to uh, sentence for a murder. And, and the story is basically that that story through. It's a, it's an incredible story, and I think we just start off Dutton with the way it's the way it's portrayed in the show is he didn't do it. This is ridiculous. How can he even att- think that he did do it? So the, the, my first question to you, and then I'll ask Kate the same, is how angry did this show make you? With each passing moment, my blood pressure, which is probably already dangerously high due to a you know, poor diet, no exercise and lack of sleep, excel- accelerated to near nuclear levels by every single smiling, grinning, s- slimy get they put up on the screen associated with the Manit- uh, Manitoc Sheriff's Department. Catherine, how angry did the show make you? It made me incredibly angry. I'm not going to add in loads of unnecessary adjectives there. I'll uh, let Neil carry on with that, but absolutely furious. You just, you just literally just needed to shout at the television at all points because it was just wrong and it just made me mad. Well, I, I watched it as well, and it is one of those shows where you're just watching. It's like this actually physically can't happen. It's it's one of them like t- the truth is stranger than fiction, and this was just strange to its to its nth degree. Standard qu- standard question for me though, like this was set in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're gonna play a game now, unfortunately, Kate, and you're gonna lose. Do you know where Green Bay, Wisconsin? Do you know where Wisconsin is? No. So Wisconsin is in the north of the United States of America, near Canada. Correct, Neil? Correct. It's very cold. Very cold. <clears throat> Hence the snow in the, in the TV show. We're led to believe in the UK that all stupid Americans come from the south of the country, maybe Alabama. Do you know where Alabama is? No. Okay, that's in the south part of the United States of America. How... how I sometimes... like. Does this just show to all of us that like ninety percent of all Americans are thick? Um, in the hope that we may one day break the American audience, uh, I'm going to say no. Kate, I think that's a 
sound a little harsh to say that all Americans are thick. I didn't say all, I said 90%. Well, 90% of them. I think that there is, you know, a, a rather large population that are a few biscuits short of a tin. I'd just like to say, literally 24 hours earlier than when we're recording this podcast, a vast majority of a state thought that the best person to lead the Republican Party is Donald Trump. So you guys can walk around the fact that Americans are thick. I'm I'm comfortable in my position. I have already um, extracted an apology from a, 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 a US-based NFL writer who says we're going to have <laughs> we're going to have Trump as president, and you guys get to watch the uh, Rams in, uh, next year. We're sorry. <laughs> It's a very good point. I mean, one of the other major characters in the show is Stephen Avery's um, nephew, nephew, Bradley, uh, who's also... Mm-hmm. Sorry? I was saying Bradley. Bradley. And he... Um, and Are you accusing all, me of? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not what we're accusing Bradley of. He mm-hmm. seems to be taken away and led to tell a story that involves him then killing... assisting in killing this woman, Teresa... Mm. Um, he has no clue. He, I don't think he can count to ten. Is is the Bradley character the saddest part of the story in terms of a moron position? Well, yeah, because I mean, let's let's not paint any pictures here. Stephen Avery is not all there. He doesn't seem like he's playing with a full deck. There's obviously been some. He seems to be the family that everyone's a little bit wary of. Now, I'm not saying categorically that he hasn't done bad things in his life. And because, you know, I'm not a detective, I'm not empowered by the law to say that. But it's the process of the way things are being done. It's No, 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 no. The ends are not justified by the means of how you're going about this. Just because you don't like someone, you can't get them off the street that way. Bradley, bless him. He's trying to play with the scraps of the deck that's... Steven's got left. He's basically, you know, you get a deck of cards. The first thing you should do is go in and take the Jokers out. Yeah, that's what Bradley's been given. He's a, he's a, is he a sympathetic character, Kate? Or? Oh, he's just a little bit nice bit dim, isn't he, really? The, the problem is with him is they just completely exploited him. And they said that his IQ was basically three and still thought that it was appropriate to lead him down that kind of questioning route and put him into that situation where he was just completely and utterly manipulated into saying what they wanted him to say. And you do feel an enormous sense of empathy towards him because he was very vulnerable, but come on, you know, how stupid do you have to be to say that I I helped to kill somebody when you blatantly didn't? Why... Why would you do that? So is it a case that he is actually stupid or is it a case that he is a little bit twisted? Because it takes a certain type of person to say that they've gone in and raped and helped to murder somebody. You don't just make that up because you're stupid. You make that up because you're not quite all there. You're a few marbles short there as well. So it's not just stupidity. I think there's something else underlying with him. But, I, I don't know, I, I did just feel a little bit sorry for him because he just really wanted to go home and see that new kitten that his mum had bought, really. Oh, that was all he was interested in, wasn't it? <coughs> I just w- want to understand how someone who can be questioned by the police on possibly four different occasions never had a lawyer present at any one of these situations. All appropriate adult. Yeah, or an appropriate adult. He because, never had anyone there with him. Yeah, because when they mm. first started to question him, they didn't do it under arrest, did they? They mm. just did it as a, we're going to ask you a few little questions, then we're going to re- apply the pressure, then we're going to put words into your mouth, get you to agree to them, and he just went along with it. So they didn't feel like they needed to to have a lawyer there with him because they could just ask him whatever they wanted. At one stage, he was... Something he was like, basically the um, I forget his name, the, the investigator's name, Murta Sack or whatever it is. Um, they were trying to get him to say something, and it was so obvious that they were trying to get him to say something. It was like they were saying to him, "When I stamp my foot and knock on the table, you say, and I say, hello, Mister Thompson. You say hello. I think he's talking to you. Basically, yes. Unfortunately, this man is, you know, this man is not even a man. This child doesn't have the intellect of Series 5 Homer Simpson. Which is a scary thought of Series 5 Homer Simpson was a freaking moron. Um, 
I suppose the major question is now, if, if we're, all, we're all in the Stephen Avery was framed camp, right? Mm-hmm. I am. Neil? I'll just keep an open mind, but it's, as I say again... What open mind do you want? If he is guilty, the way they have got this evidence around is not correct that is not the right way to do it he, he he just simply can't be guilty because how can somebody who is so stupid eradicate every single piece of dna evidence at all he is stupid as is his nephew they would not physically have the iq to be able to remove this evidence and this dna they just wouldn't be able to do it they're not they're not clever enough to do it they wouldn't know how to bleach or how to clean the bed clothes or how to get inside the crevices inside the wall cracks not like not like you who's a professional cleaner yeah look i'm a stay-at-home mum now but <laughs> my day. seriously but you know unless he's pinterest the hell out of how to kill somebody He's not going to have the IQ to be able to get rid of all of that evidence. It's just ridiculous. So the two best, uh, sorry, just the two best tweets I have seen about this is um, one of them is the special um, Manitok Cluedo, and basically the answer is uh, Stephen Avery in the trailer park with whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other one, uh, what was it? You know, I've lost my keys. Can someone get the Manitok, uh, Man- Manitok uh, PD around here? Maybe they can find them for me. I've seen, I've seen a picture which I will tweet out later at the at, at waxing underscore lyrical Twitter account, which is uh, I lost I lost my I lost my toothbrush. I got the Ma- Manitok here and police to go and look for it. They eventually found it in the middle of my room. In plain in plain sight. So the, the, obviously the, we think. The catalyst for this whole situation is when Stephen Avery decides to sue the police for millions of dollars. So the question becomes, Dutton, you're, mm-hmm. accused, you're accused of attacking attacking someone. It's never going to happen because they beat the crap out of you. Um, you go yep. to jail. You, you're exonerated, obviously, because there's no, absolutely no way you can do it. So you sue St. Helens Police Force. Do you then stay in St. Helens Police Force's jurisdiction or do you move you know, to Botswana? Well, bear in mind, America, you may have noticed this, is an extraordinarily lit- litigation-based culture. I live here. This is my hometown. All of my family, you know, are, are there. You know, the, the family tree that clearly doesn't fork very much. Um, I want to live here still because he still wanted to work in the scrapyard with his mum and dad. I've been wronged. I'm going to sue you for it. Now... Obviously, they initially offered him, I think it was like $400,000 or something, but someone else decided, no, you can have $36 million if you do it properly. Yeah. Um, I, it's one of the, I, I think $400,000, Stephen Avery probably could have bought all the crappy old cars and worked on them till his end of days. But if, if that's your home and you've been told you sue them, you can get money for it, well, you're going to. Because that's the culture you live in. In this country, you probably think, "Yeah, I really need a new name." <laughs> would you sue them? Would you, if you sued them, if you sued Great Yarmouth Police Department, Kate, would you then move to, you know, Ipswich? The problem is, I think, is it depends where you live as well. Because if you sued them around here, what they're going to do? Come after you in police tractors. True, good point. <laughs> What's good point. I could probably if run we, away from that. If we lived up like north where you lot come from, it might be a completely different story. Now, I'm not making a derogatory comment. I think you are. I think you are. Just stating a few facts. However, round here, I'm not really quite sure what they're going to do about it, if I'm honest. They probably would get a bit pissed off. Mm, true. But I don't think they would go to a degree of trying to frame you or anything like that. I think they would probably just give you a few speaking flies. I can get a few speeding fans well, off them without without, without, without 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 any yeah. help of, yeah. of suing them. So <laughs> Teresa died. Um, although Dutton seems to suggest that you know if he was CSI, he could he could prove that Stephen Avery did it. Um, who are we? The, 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 who are, who do you think killed Teresa if it wasn't Stephen Avery? Dutton. I honestly don't know um, because. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying he did. I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling it in. But the cause and reason why why anyone would want this girl dead, I, I, it wasn't like she was a massive drug dealer. She wasn't a criminal, you know, hard case. She looked like she weighed three stones soaking wet. Um, so it's, it's one of those, it's, I mean, obviously people get murdered for the variety of reasons, I'm assuming. 
again, not an expert. And no, I don't want to be murdered to test this theory. But why anyone would want to, it's a bit odd. So I, I'm not prepared to, stick to nail my colours to any particular mast. So in, in the complete opposite of nailing, not nailing your colours to a, to a mast, um, Katie Malmquist, can I have your theory, which you've deliberated on over the past three months after watching the show? Yeah, it's her brother. It's completely and utterly her brother. He, he just, firstly, he looks guilty, and I'll explain that in a second. But if you remember the videos that she made, these weird videos about how if she had, if she was going to die and she wasn't going to be around any longer, how she wanted her friends and family to know how much she loved life and all stuff like that. But all she talked about was her two sisters. She never made any reference to her brother whatsoever. He was completely... It's like he didn't even exist, and I didn't even know he even existed until you saw him pop up in the trials and all this kind of malarkey. I think he had some type of sibling jealousy going on there, to be honest. And then when you watched him during the trials, her mum had her head down, she was crying, the other relatives were, they were consoling each other, and all he was doing was watching what the other people were saying, and as if to say, you know, I need to make sure they say this, or they say that, or what am I going to do? He was just too interested in what was going on. He just looked like a man that was guilty, and he had a really bad haircut. So. Ah. The, 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 the haircuts of most people that I've seen, they've not come out well. Most of the, the law enforcement officers, Jesus Christ, get a Tony and Guy out there. <laughs> yeah, but there is a guy with a wig as well in there. He had a questionable syrup. <laughs> there, was a question, there was at least one questionable syrup. I, I, the brother is a logical position. You know, I'm thinking, I'm not 100% sure why I don't, if I'm the police and I'm getting sued for 36 million, I don't just pop it off myself. I'm not. I'm not sure the brother was clever enough to like randomly leave the car in the middle of in the middle of the um, in the middle of the uh, uh, scrapyard. That, and that's just me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He didn't leave it in the middle, though, did he? Let's think about it. He left it strate- strategically yeah, on the edge, and then God sent the people to find the car. That was that was one of my favourite moments. The, there's always got to be a. So why did you start walking in one direction and com- quickly turn? So completely other direction, then find the car within 30 seconds on a, like, 15-acre plot. I just had a feeling God told me, go away, go away, yeah. American, go away, American woman, you are, no, no. God, 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 of course, being the you know the nickname of the chief of the uh, sheriff's department. <laughs> exactly, the woman, the guy who said, look over here, it's like pointing with a big acme arrow, like flashing <laughs> lights, look at this car, look at this car. So Dutton, um... We also became obsessed with a podcast um, called uh, Serial. Kate, did you ever listen to this? You forced me to listen to about half an hour of it. It was dull. Kate doesn't listen to podcasts. This is awkward. Um, Do you see any parallels between Making a Murder, the TV show, and Serial, season one? Well, yeah, I think, obviously, Making a Murder probably stems from the genesis of Serial in the sense that Here's a, a crime, probably quite high profile in its way, in a, in a local sense, not internationally. The inter- information superhighway in 1999, for example, wasn't what it is today. You know, we didn't have Twitter. We had MySpace. <laughs> you still going? Um, um, so basically, it was, you know, it was basically it was looked upon and a p- people with a certain degree of influence, pro- not influence, a certain degree of um, scope, could take up the cause of it, and that's similar to what's happened with making a murderer. It's it's let's say it's both are cases that first glance look iffy, and second glance and first smell stink to high heaven. I just look and think if you if you are someone now who is a, is unsure whether you committed that crime or or a family member of someone who committed the crime, you are calling every single. Document, documentarian or podcaster to try and get your, your story next because we all assume and as we speak in terms of the serial situation there's a there's a, a, a trial going on related to evidence that, was ta- that wasn't that was put in, into light so they're blaming the, his his defence lawyer allegedly Stephen now dead a- now dead Stephen Avery's now got a new Ultimo criminal defence lawyer from Chicago who's looking into his case Do do you think if we did this in 12 months' time, that there will be a retrial for Stephen Avery, Kate? 
I would hope there would be, to be honest. I, I really do, because I just, I struggle to understand how he's locked up in jail, because there just is complete and utter lack of evidence. And I just don't know how they're following any type of process to put people behind bars fairly when they've convicted this bloke with no physical evidence that he actually committed the crime. So I, I can't get my head around why he's even locked up anyway, to be honest. I should hope so. It, it, all I'd say is, if you haven't watched this show, um, all three of us would strongly recommend a, 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 a watch. What we would say is, be prepared to get very angry I'm very confused about how a man gets uh, put down for murder due to this yeah. situation. Don't watch it if you're in a bad mood to begin with. That is a very good point. That's a very good point. Well, thanks for your time, Kate. Thank you, you for having me. You can talk. I was going to say, well done. You're allowed to talk. Um, we talk Super Bowl. We talk making a murderer. Um, weekly schedule. We're up and running. This has been Waxing Lyrical. Get used to it. Yeah.